Hey, deserving listeners, vendor pump rules. Let's watch this show. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. Let's see what happens. The weather certainly sets the tone. Yeah. I mean, I know you want to see me, Tom. I've heard so much. I don't understand a lot of it, to be honest. Ariana's been here. I didn't want to hurt her. And Ariana has a hard time with trusting people, and I didn't... Well, what's she going to have now? I mean, this isn't a trust... Yeah, okay, you know, I could see that. It doesn't make it okay, and it's ridiculous that you would land on that plan of action, but I get the impulse. I think what he's communicating, and learning from T. Sky that Ariana has a history of depression and anxiety and an eating disorder, that it would be compassionate for Tom to be even more concerned about breaking up with Ariana or more concerned with making sure that when he does break up with Ariana, he does it when Ariana is at, in her best possible situation such that she can recover more quickly. You know, like you can imagine Tom thinking, well, I want to make sure that she has her friends around her or whatever, you know, or that she's in a pretty good place. Now, that doesn't explain things. We're not hearing that. If Tom said something like, you don't understand. I mean, she was in and out of inpatient. She was suicidal. And I, sh I guess I should have told her earlier, but I mean, yeah, we're not hearing that. And I don't think that's even what's been happening. So that's not an excuse, but you can imagine someone in Tom's position feeling that way. And, it, and of course, it's compassionate to not want to hurt her, right? And that is a big reason why people will avoid taking the moral action, which is to tell your partner that you need to break up with them. So he, he's saying, you know, she has trust issues. And yeah, and I've, I've seen this before. We've seen it on other shows. When we think about Summit and Jenny, there was a similar kind of theme here where Tom might have a history of abuse or relationship issues such that he feels responsible for a lot of, he feels ashamed, he's been guilted, you know, about hurting other people's feelings or being responsible for harming other people or something. And maybe that was put on him unfairly, who knows. And he feels overly responsible for other people's feelings such that it eclipses his better judgment. Uh, some people will do this. They aren't doing it out of necessarily even self-preservation, but they are terrified of being responsible for someone else's pain. And and not just mildly terrified, but absolutely traumatically terrorized about hurting other people and being to blame for someone else's discomfort or them being upset. And so they, every day, they come to a Y in the road and they have two choices. One is to do the right thing and tell Ariana and know that you're going to hurt her, which is completely abhorrent to you. Again, you might even have trauma around it. You might've been abused around similar situations. So you can either do the right thing and really hurt her and potentially potentially even risk depression and anxiety and whatever is down that road. Or, which is, by the way, the right thing to do um, because of obvious reasons, or you choose this other route where you just go into denial, where you don't tell Ariana, but you just tell yourself that you're going to soon. You're going to do it soon. Everything will work out and it, there'll be a, a, the right moment. You know, if you watch 90 Day Fiance with me, Think about Rishi and Jen and how Rishi was waiting for this moment a couple months later to tell his parents about his relationship with Jen. And it was my belief that he was just kicking the can down the road. The circumstances around the marriage and his relationship and his role in, the, in his family was not going to magically change in a couple months. So I think it's a natural tendency for people to do that. So, so people will be in this really difficult situation, but since they learned at a young age to go into denial, it's like this well-worn path in their neurology that is denial and just put your head down and just keep just keep going and and don't bother the world don't don't rock the boat and of course what ends up happening is you end up actually not only harming Ariana but you harm her times 10 because you cheated on her for 8 months and god knows how long the infidelity would have continued because from my understanding, yeah, right. Uh, uh, Ariana said she discovered it because she got a hold of his phone because he dropped it while he was at his gig, and that's when she saw the the you know the evidence of the infidelity. So the infidelity could have gone for years, and that's not uncommon. If it went for eight months, who knows how long it could have gone for? So the pain and the harm that, that you cause, but because you're so terrified of committing a little bit of harm, you know, kids do this all, people do this all the time, but I think this is more understandable with kids. You know, an eight-year-old eats all the candy bars out of 
the closet, you know, the, the pantry in the kitchen. And the parents find out and they, they go to the kids and say, who ate the candy bars? And all the kids are like, not me, including the guilty kids. Like, I didn't do it. And the parents are like, are you sure you didn't do it? No, I, I didn't do it. Because you're terrified of getting in trouble, right? But what ends up happening is they find the wrappers and the, the chocolate smeared across your face. And now not only are you in trouble for doing that, but you're 10 times more in trouble because you lied about it, right? People do this all the time. And when you're a, ch a child, you learn, hopefully, through attuned and non-abusive parenting that it's better to face the music in the moment than to kick the can down the road and create a mountain out of a molehill, if I was to mix all these metaphors. Um, so children are, they learn that lesson. And if you see an adult doing that, then something went wrong when they were a child, because there's so many opportunities for children to be uh, given an opportunity to learn from that lesson. So I'm just going to take a guess and say that Tom had something go wonky when he was younger. Interesting place when you're sleeping with one of her best friends. <sighs> I know, I know. Me and Raquel had every intention of telling Ariana before the reunion. There's no way we could feel like a human being, either one of us, to have Ariana. Well, we'll never know if you're telling the truth, Tom, because you didn't tell her. You were discovered. And so what that you intended on to, before the reunion? How about telling her after that first time? You could argue it, if you really made a point of it, of like, look, we got drunk that first night and we kissed. I, I didn't plan on doing that. It just happened. But then I immediately told you, Ariana, and we, we need to address this or break up or something. You could have done that. So saying that you fully intended on saying something before the reunion, one, doesn't account for the eight months. And two, we'll never know if you're telling the truth because you're a liar and you've shown that and it doesn't seem likely. I mean, what's the likelihood? I mean, if I was to put money down, and of course we'll never know because you know what's done is done. But if we did have the ability to test this, I would put money down that he wouldn't tell Ariana before the, the reunion because everything that led up to him cheating on Kristen, cheating on Ariana, it sounds like he cheated on Ariana multiple times from the write-up, but who knows, at least that time. Everything that lead, led up to that uh, suddenly isn't going to go away <laughs> uh, for him to be able to face the music. The fact that he couldn't face the music for eight entire months. And again, I keep drilling down on this because if you're a victim of infidelity, it's easy to be brainwashed otherwise, which is every day, every minute of the 16 hours that you are awake in a given day on average. For every minute, how long does it take to send a text? How long does it say, take to say something to someone? How long does it take to email someone? How long does it take to call someone? It takes literally half a second to make that choice. So count up all the half seconds in eight months that Tom had while he was awake that he chose not to say something. Every single moment was a decision to lie. And Raquel and me. Obviously, I love Raquel like dearly. She's one of my like closest friends and I not only trust and love her, but I trust and love my boyfriend. I mean, it looks terrible in retrospect. I would love to be able to have a conversation with her when she's not so angry at me. Yeah, I've been over this, but just briefly, what I will tell the Toms of the world is, unless she's being abusive, then you're just gonna have to face the music. She's going to be angry at you. Why would she not be angry at you? She loved you. She wanted to spend the rest of her life with you. If she wasn't angry, you should be upset about that because she was lying to you. So she's going to be angry. The other thing I would explore is, okay, what are you worried about? Like, let's say that she gets really angry. What's the concern? Now, if it's a safety concern, I would obviously want to assess that. But often there's no rational answer to that, to their fear of just like, well, but you know, if she gets angry, then now he might say rationally, that when she gets emotional like that, when she gets really upset, she sometimes can do some irrational things. You know, when she was depressed before, when she had an eating disorder before, she's done some really self-destructive things, and I worry about that. And I'd say, okay, well, that doesn't mean you don't have the conversation. It just means maybe there's some things we can do to support her to make sure that she has the support she needs. It doesn't justify, you know, waiting for her not to get angry before you talk to her, it it means you'll never talk to her, one. And two, it's it's very self-serving. Like, you're saying you want to avoid the consequences of your actions. <laughs> like, just, she's going to get angry. And, you know, this is expected. Very conflicted about being honest about details because I think about it hurting Ariana more. 
I don't know if I'll ever get that chance, which kills me. I have compassion for him, but I wonder where the tears are coming from because I have yet to see obvious evidence that he's crying in remorse for the hurt he caused other people, particularly Ariana. I, I see a... a I see evidence that when he cries like this, which I, it looks legit, unless he's a really good actor, looks like legit, you know, sudden tears and sobbing, that it's out of self-pity. There's nothing wrong with crying out of self-pity. I've said this before that I have a theory that nearly all the time when we're crying, at least a portion of it is self-pity, which is fine. Even when I'm watching a Pixar movie and I'm crying, uh, I, I, you know, there's a part of it that I'm feeling some longing or pain or something in in me in my heart something that relates to my life and how i see myself anyway so there's nothing wrong with being uh, crying over self-pity um it's it can be really healthy actually but if that's all that he's doing <laughs> then uh, you know it's not good it's not fair to ariana and is indicative of something going on with him some sort of blockage to his empathy or maturity or, or something but so I think what he's crying in this moment is, well, let's rewind that because he said something that I think was in that direction of that he's negatively impacted. I don't know if I'll ever get that chance, which kills me. Right. So, I mean, there's a possibility that he's crying for Ariana, that he's saying there's a chance I'll never get that chance to, to tell her or talk with her, which kills me. And I feel so bad for Ariana or is he crying because he feels victimized by Ariana's anger or something. Now, maybe the whole history of this relationship, she was really mean to him over time. I, I don't know. Uh, there's no evidence that he hasn't really alluded to that. But, you know, that's another possibility. Take a moment. Did always protect each other and for all the things that we've been through for that to be the last conversation we have is really hard for me to yeah it, it's fine that he's crying it's good that he's crying it means that he cares it means that he's healthy to feel some self-pity around that like it, it hurts him to think that that's the last conversation you would have. I, I doubt that that's actually going to happen, given that they're on a reality TV show. <laughs> I think they'll force them to talk together at some point, and maybe that'd be a good thing um, within reason. But uh, something wrong with him crying. But again, if that's the only reason why he's crying, then that says something, right? The handle. Oh, God. Okay, you have to. Oh, you have to. Oh, God. You have to. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, so uh, Lisa Vanderpump, I believe is her name, and she is considered everyone's mom-ish on the show, I think, and she is now talking with Tom, and Tom is uh, seemingly having a, a real visceral bodily sort of crying. Some, I'm, some people, I'm sure, are, would accuse him of faking this and playing it up it's for pity. It's possible. It's also possible that this is legit, and if it is legit, it has the markers I've observed so many pe so many people crying over my 25 years as a clinician, as a professor, as a human being. I've also cried a lot myself. There's a lot of different types of crying. The type I would call this is of the visceral nature and the intensity of it. You know, the the amount of convulsions that someone's going through, the hiding of the face. Uh, it has the look of something traumatic happening. You know, certainly I could be wrong. I can't read people's minds. There's someone on the internet labeled me a, a while back as a body language expert. And I would just say like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Do not associate me with that pseudoscience. There is some research around body language and uh, we, we can talk about that, but uh, the amount of uh, BS etude regarding body language, particularly on YouTube and TikTok, it, it, it's uh, astounding. So I would not want to be associated at all with that. So I'm not saying that here either. I'm just saying it would be one of the first hypotheses I would have that thus would drive the questions or the vibe I would have with someone. So I don't know, but it's possible, it's just, just an hypothesis that given the mother figure, he is starting to let go a little bit maybe, and maybe even is going back to an earlier 
point in his life. I don't know. It's a lot of psychobabble I'm throwing out there. And he is reminded of some trauma that he's been through. I know that's very cliche of a therapist to say, but that would be a top hypothesis. I wouldn't know. I would have to ask him, you know, like, what's going on for you? And when have you felt this way before? I certainly wouldn't do it now because he's going through some. Oh, God. You have to stop. It's going to get better from here on. Oh. It's going to get better from here on. In. It's been all too much, I know. And again, she did that before with Ariana, where she's like, everything's going to be fine, essentially, is her way of, of acting. And I don't know, maybe for Tom and for Ariana, that's exactly what they want to hear. But I don't recommend saying that, especially when someone's in the depths of their despair, because it can be off-putting and dismissive. You just be with someone like, hey, I'm with you, you know, I hear you. Or just say nothing. Just be with them. Just put your hand in your back, on their back, and, and just sit next to them, you know, that... When someone's in the depths of this sort of despair, they don't usually want to be told everything's going to be fine, as if it's not a big deal what they're going through right now. Yeah. I want her to be happy. I want her to get the love that she deserves. From somebody else? Yeah. She deserves more, man. She does deserve more. You're not a bad person, Tom. You just did a bad thing. Make sure you know that. Yeah, it's, it's a really great thing to say as a mother figure. You did a horrible, horrible thing, but it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It's good parenting when you have kids that make mistakes. And um, yeah, it's a good thing for her to say. And if I had a client that was going through this, yeah, I, that would be something I would say. Today, I get a call from my publicist telling me that Raquel has filed for a temporary restraining order. I just want you to remember, this is not your forever. I couldn't believe that this person who I have taken in under my wing is now taking things to a legal level. Yeah, uh, we don't know the circumstances. Maybe Raquel would say, look, I had reason to believe that this individual was going to attack me in the future or they were harassing me or something. So we don't know. doesn't sound like that. Yeah. If this wasn't a public thing, then you'd say like, well, okay, they took it. It's pretty easy to get those kinds of orders approved in a court, uh, depending, because generally speaking, the government is not interested in uh, giving people the opportunity to commit mayhem and crimes and violence and stuff. So someone's like, I want that person to stay away from me. And it's absolutely possible for that person to stay away. They're just like, yeah, let's, let's just let's just approve of this order and keep them apart. But because it's public, it makes her out to look like she's some sort of criminal or something. And maybe she is. I, I don't know. Uh, certainly, I don't think she believes that she is. Okay. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really, really do.